Hello crafters, today I wanted to share some is ink techniques using acetate. These are all available from Keep On Crafting. I'm just using an ordinary piece of acetate. If you want to heat set the backgrounds, you're probably best to use heat resistant acetate. I did heat set a couple of these but I didn't hold the heat gun over them um, I wafted it around because obviously it will melt or distort the acetate so I'm using the iris the turquoise and the amethyst on this one and you do need to shake the inks before you use them some of them have a shimmer to them and if you don't shake them Obviously you don't see that shimmer because it settles at the bottom. I saw this technique on TV. It was John Lockwood who was doing it, so I thought I'd give it a go. So I'm just placing a, another piece of acetate over the top and moving the inks around. Really simple techniques. Uh, it's quite addictive. And you do get different looks depending on obviously how much ink you put down and what you use to mop it up. So I'm using another piece of acetate, this time with the mimosa, which is quite a solid colour and there's no shimmer to that. And the mango this has got a shimmer unfortunately my dropper is broken on this one so I really need to use it with a pipette but at the time I was doing this video I couldn't remember I'd stashed them away I'd obviously put them in a safe place but I can't I couldn't remember where the safe place was so I'm just wiping it onto the acetate with the dropper rather than dropping it on And then I'm using cactus, which has also got a shimmer to it. I actually made quite a few backgrounds the day I did this. I didn't film them all. I did try it on vellum, but it was a bit too wet. I'm just using a piece of watercolour paper from a pad it's just a really inexpensive pad that I've had for a while just to pick that up like I say that's given me a different look on the acetate because the, you've got the pattern which makes it look a bit like honeycomb then I went in with the jasmine this is quite a solid colour and I didn't really achieve the look that I was hoping for but like I say it was just a play session really is just experimenting I'm just trying to get a dog hair off there <laughs> I can't eat or craft without finding at least one dog hair and I'm just squishing that down with another piece of acetate You see it's provided um, a solid background to those colours but I think I would have preferred to have added more of the coloured inks rather than the white. So I'm going back in with the cactus. Now that's not going to come through very much on the white but I have gone in with a clean bit of acetate to pick up that colour so I will get another background from it and 
and then I'm going in with the tomato which is a really nice deep red and another clean sheet You can also paint with these inks. Um, I did do another video, I think that was back in February, um, using a stamp and one of the backgrounds. So just stamping on the acetate and then cutting it out. And I made a card from that. There's a full video on my YouTube channel. So as you can see I've just heat set that one, but like I said I was wafting the heat gun rather than staying in one place. And then I'm going back in with the cactus to fill in those gaps. It sounds weird but sometimes you think to yourself that you don't want to print it off that way round so you turn the acetate round even though it's just a background so it doesn't really make a difference but sometimes there seems to be a right way and a wrong way. And you can see that like pooling in the little areas of clear which I quite liked it's like a spotted effect. And this is the amber, which is a really nice colour. It looks really brown when it comes out and in the bottle. But once you spread it, it's a really nice orange. You can see it's like a really orangey colour. And obviously because I've just done that with the acetate it's spread completely differently to the other piece. I'm just going in with a bit of white to fill in the gap. It's quite a messy craft obviously, so if you don't like getting your hands dirty you might want to put on some gloves. I'm using that same piece of watercolour paper just to do a bit more mopping from the acetate. It built up some really nice layers on the mop up sheet. And then I tried to do a different technique, so sort of to make a rainbow effect. Um, this is the tomato, and I'm just dropping it on and letting it run down. I decided to open all the bottles because it's a lot quicker. So this is more of the tomato just to make that run to the bottom and then the mango 
which is obviously my broken dropper is not helping that because it's quite hard to get the right amount of paint onto the acetate so it runs and then the mimosa and the cactus I didn't go in any particular order I just used all the colours I had apart from the white and the amber and this is the turquoise you'll see it's making quite a nice pattern on the craft sheet there but obviously once you push into it to pick it up it spreads so and that was the iris and this is the amethyst the turquoise iris and amethyst are probably my three favorite colors but i do really like the amber as well so it's a really different sort of color and then this is the geranium and the orchid and I'll just mop some of that up with that same sheet but because I want to get back onto the rainbow piece quite quickly and pick it up before it dries I just decide to fold the craft sheet over and yes my craft sheet does need a good clean and that's just a fresh piece of acetate and just the same process and I really like how this one turned out I think I need to see if I have any unicorn stamps or something like that in my stash to use with this one there's something about unicorns and rainbows And there you see how it's spread. And then open this back and pick that up on a fresh piece of watercolour paper. And then we've got the start of another background. And then that's my mop-up sheet. Thanks for watching.